Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio and today I want to show you how to draw grapes but more specifically I want to show you how to draw objects that have a shine and how to draw objects so that they are three-dimensional and it's easier than you think. This video is a shortened version of the real-time tutorial that is on the $4 tier over on my Patreon channel so you can pop on over there and check that out if you like. It's aimed at beginners and is 3 hours and 40 minutes long with full narration, line art, copyright free reference and a full supply list so you can follow me along every step of the way. If you're intimidated about drawing freehand, don't worry, there are easy ways to transfer. Sometimes I use a light pad and just take my surface, in this case Strathmore Bristol smooth paper, to the pad on top of my reference turn to black and white or turn to line art and just trace around it. The old masters used transfer meth methods way back so there's nothing to feel bad about. Drawing freehand is a skill that takes time and you can learn a lot from tracing. So I first put some white coloured pencil pigment down in the areas that are highlighted and this is so that whenever colour goes on top it'll act like a mask and won't be able to go too dark. It's important to preserve the whiter parts of your drawing as it's hard to erase colour completely. You can lift colour and a kneaded or putty eraser is good for this but you can't get back to the original bright white surface. I then lay down my lightest colours first beginning with a greyed lavender colour and I'm using Prismacolor wax based pencils in this exercise gradually building up to the darker tones. I keep my edges really crisp and I pay attention to the reference photo all the time. I once heard that an artist should be looking at their reference photo as much as they're looking at their artwork second for second. If anything I'd agree but say that looking at the reference even more than the artwork is even better. We're hardwired to think we know what we see even when it's not there. I like to keep my laptop in front of my work and I work in roughly the same size to help keep my proportions the same and I feel that that really helps for a successful outcome, particularly if you are a beginner. Having to resize everything in addition to trying to achieve realism just adds more work than is really necessary. What's really fascinating is that our brain tells us that this bunch of grapes is red I only used two pencils that were actually red. The others were terracotta, lavender, peach or brown tones. And of those two reds, only one was a true red, a crimson red. The other one was a dark burgundy. The best way to achieve realism in these grapes is to make sure that the highlights are in exactly the right place and that the contrast is correct. Values, or contrast, is the key to realism. And it's most important if you want your drawing to have three dimensions, even though we know that a sheet of paper is of course just two dimensional. The values in your work are so much more important than color. So don't think that color will save your work, because it won't. Contrast naturally grabs the eye of the viewer. Obtaining good contrast is the one thing that will make your drawings look realistic and that means having good contrast between your lights and your darks. It's not about the colour and here I'm placing down some nectar which is a peachy beige colour as I could have done this drawing with more purple tones or just substituted green and drawn some green grapes in instead and still use the same reference and it would have looked realistic. But it's the way light and dark are used that brings visual interest and excitement to a piece. Squinting at your drawing really helps because you're not focusing on all the details that can get in the way, but you're noticing the light and the dark areas more. And someone once said, if you've got the values, you've got the painting, or in this case drawing, so values really are a fundamental concept in art. So I keep applying more colour and I'm deepening my colours and adding more value 
noticing the shadows and staying away from those highlights. And things are beginning to take shape. If you are able to keep a light enough pressure, your work will look so much better because one of the best qualities with coloured pencils is their translucency. Using a decent quality paper is important for success and this Strathmore Bristol Smooth is a good quality paper that I really like. You can also use hot press watercolour paper, pastel matte and Strathmore Vellum is good which has just a little bit more tooth to it and you'll find your favourite after experimenting with a few of them. And as for techniques, I'm applying very light pressure to all the layers I'm placing down and I want to use not only light pressure but even pressure throughout. And I'm just concentrating on the shapes first while creating good transitions between those shades so that I can go in with some solvent to blend everything and eliminate some of the graininess that is inherent in coloured pencil drawings. Before I apply solvent though, it's extremely important to make sure you have enough pigment applied. There needs to be enough pigment so that the solvent can work. If you put solvent down without enough pigment, nothing will happen. The layering takes a bit of time, but solvent really speeds up the process of not having to add too many additional layers. To apply solvent, either use a filbert brush which has a rounded edge or a small brush with a point. I brush off any loose particles with a soft brush. Solvent or odorless mineral spirits is applied very sparingly. So I load my brush with a little and then press against the jar to let the drips fall off and wipe away excess. A little goes a long way so you don't want to make the mistake of using too much and once on the brush I'm spreading out the pigment and using the brush until it's almost dry. It's an amazing technique for blending everything smoothly and creating more vibrancy in your artwork as well as adding a more painterly effect. You don't want big greasy stains on the paper and you don't want it spreading so make sure you pay attention to the edges and you can use the side of the brush and also feather in some of your brush strokes to avoid harsh lines. Blend everything in until the brush is completely dry before re-dipping. And when changing colours, dip into the solvent and wipe off that excess pigment onto a paper towel before continuing blending so that you don't contaminate your colours. You can see the before and after here. Before has all the graininess and after has no graininess with a much more refined and polished look. I drew a grape study before this one and just want to show you that another layer makes all the difference. So we're not finished as I'll apply another layer of coloured pencil over the top but not until the solvent has dried thoroughly and this time with the second layer it's much easier because I know what to do. So just like in the beginning I start with the pale colours work up to the henna colours, move into the reds and then build one more layer on top. Sometimes it's handy to look at the reference on your phone. I'm seeing that I want to punch up some more of the contrast and get a lot more depth in my drawing. I did amp up the contrast in the reference but it's okay to use artistic license and make everything a bit more vibrant and it's also good to constantly reevaluate and be your own critic. We've got the tools now to help us out. I can apply more pressure now and because I used a first layer followed by solvent there's less chance of graininess. So all I'm doing now is I'm just adding a second layer of coloured pencils on top. I'm using a tool here called a stylus for the leaf part of the drawing. Ceramicists and nail technicians use these tools and I've scored my leaf veins so that when coloured pencil is applied on top it will miss these grooves and instantly create the veins without having to go around those white areas which would be difficult and take forever. So this is a great little trick to employ. I've added base layers of yellow, chartreuse and apple green and I'm building up the colour grazing over those indentations I made and you can see the veins much better when the darker colours are applied. 
Lastly, I can add my shadows and I used a blue to keep things more lively than just a dull grey to help ground the grapes. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. I add new content about once a week so you can always stay alerted to my new content. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.